Hey guys, welcome to the overview of the Webflow Logic Beta. Um, I finally got access to it. I'm able to go ahead and use it, play around with it a little bit. Um, so I'm going to take you through that today, just setting up a, a simple Webflow Logic setup on my site for a little lead gen thing I'm doing. A, probably a, a pretty common use case I feel that might be used for something like this. So I'm going to jump right into it, just get straight into here, and also a little. Um, note too that I also have the membership beta access on my site as well. So we might see a couple of things that you might not see if you have, you know, if you don't have one or the other. Um, but hopefully as these things are all rolled out, you'll of course be seeing this for both. So coming to the computer, we, I have a completed flow here that I am going to go ahead and walk through setting up. I did a test one here. Fun fact, the reason why this is completed is because I actually did the whole video and didn't record correctly, so I can do it all over again. Um, so I'm going to kind of run through uh, the, some of the basics here and setting up this exact flow. So I'm actually going to save this one and, and set it aside over here. And it is on and it is testing. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to see if I can actually duplicate this one. I believe I can. Yeah, duplicate. Perfect. Okay. I have an email form, a sign up form, all that fun stuff here. Um, so we need to actually select a form. So I think I'm, I'm going to have to re undo everything and, and show you all uh, how it actually works here. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, that's fine. Uh, I can I can do all this pretty quickly. Um, but I will copy this because that is kind of a uh, pain in the butt to write. So let me make a note of that. <clears throat> okay, so to get started, what you're going to want to do is you'll see a logic section right here, and then you'll click on that. And then you're gonna click on, and then you'll essentially clear a new flow, but I already have this one set up. Um, so I'm restarting it here for the video. So we do have, um, where we do need to set this up. Now we're gonna have a couple of things here on, on the side that give us just some options to choose from. So we're gonna have send an email notification, create a CMS item, delete a CMS item. So you can you can manipulate the CMS here too. So it's pretty cool. So if someone types in something, you can have it populate the CMS and go live. Then you can do make an HTTP request. So this is how you can communicate back and forth with applications and other APIs. And then you can do invite users, delete users, and update user accounts. So you can actually use these forms to update user accounts. So if someone makes an account, maybe they wanna update the email to their account, they can go ahead and do that. And then you have conditions. And so you can do that here. So that's what's available now. So to get started, I need to select on a form and then we're gonna have our settings here. Um, reset the form trigger. Okay, let's do that. Select a form, let's do email form. Actually, sorry. Yeah, that one. So the brand strategy sign up form. Cool, that's set. Now, what I wanna do is actually send this to uh, Airtable. So when someone signs up here, I want this to go to Airtable. Now I'm gonna go ahead and I have the webhook set aside already. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull that webhook um, just for simplicity's sake. And all right, let's have that, but that is incorrect there. Okay. So I have my webhook. I'm not going to go over how to make a webhook in your table. Um, it's pretty simple. You'll go to the automations tab and select a webhook, copy that, and you paste that in here. And I don't actually, this is going to be a post call because I want to send that data, right? So you have get, post, put, patch. Um, I won't go through all those, but essentially post is going to send data, get will get data. So if you're pulling from another webhook, or you just need to make another call here to get some other information. And on this one, I don't, I do need to have a header actually. So I need, need to have content type and then you'll have application slash JSON. Okay. And then you'll need to write a JSON body for this. Uh, now it's pretty simple here on, on how to send this data. Um, just be careful for leaving an extra comma because I've done that I don't know how many times here. So I am going to copy my JSON data that I have set aside, and I'm gonna paste that in here. Okay. Now the format is a little off because it's just kind of copying and pasting some of the dynamic ones. So now in name, I'm gonna do form field, and I'm gonna do name, and then I'm gonna do my fallback to the email, or actually, sorry. Uh, let's just do no name for now. Let's do that. Okay. 
because it's not required, and I should probably make it required. Okay, and then email, I'm going to go ahead and do form field and then email here. And so if you're kind of used to like doing stuff with Zapier or whatever, it's kind of similar, you choose it there. Um, so you can pull the dynamic fields that you have. So here I have a really big form, then you can pull a lot of stuff here. And then here I have this for a marketing email. So if you sign up for the mailing list, um, which I will not get into in this video. So we're gonna do, this is the first checkbox. I didn't name those, so that's my fault there. And then we're gonna get into the second one for signing up for an account. All right, cool. Um, get rid of these here. And let's go ahead and run a test. So I'll do true, true email. Uh, let's do Josiah at Gamma Design. Co. And then name, let's do sum, let's do Josiah. Okay. And run test. And let's open up Airtable here on the other end and let's take a peek. Actually, I'm sorry. Okay, cool. That went through. Apply data. Awesome. So it's not live yet, so the data won't go through yet, but it, it, it worked. Actually, it should have gone through. I'll take that back. Yeah, it did go through. Awesome. All right, so now I have that. So now let's add let's add a condition. So I, I do have an option there to sign up for a user account. So let's go ahead and um, add the conditional block. And if we do that, we need to set this up. So we will do my second checkbox is that one. So is true. So this is going to be uh, we want to name these two for organization. So um, sign up for account question mark, and then we'll do this one here. Uh, send to error table. Okay, cool. All right, so true. So a couple of things that are true. Now we want to invite the user, pretty simple. And we'll use their email that they gave us. This one email, awesome. Invite user. And I don't have any access groups, so that's fine. And then we're going to have, um, let's see here. Now I want to send an email notification to myself. Okay, so notify of new user. Okay, and send that to myself. Subject, let's do this form field name, fall back, fall back to the email if that's the case. has signed up to watch your video and watch your, actually, sorry, branding video and is invited to make an account. Okay, so we can do that. And I can input in their data here so we can do, um, we can do their name. Here is their info for, I don't know, reaching out. And I can just do name and email. Name and email. And so I'll do my fallback on this scenario, no name. Okay. And then I will do invited on, there you go, invited on. Perfect. And then if it is false, we can just go ahead and do, send this back to me again. So we'll do notify of interest. And so here uh, we can do, we can do their name and then again, fall back to the email and say is interested in the brand sprint. Okay, cool. And then let's go ahead and put their name and I will do no name again. All right. And let's just do email just for the sake of this video. All right, cool. 
Now we have that. So now my flow is set up here. And so what I'm doing, just again to kind of recap this, is I am setting up for the, or the I'm grabbing the brand strategy form and I'm putting my logic on this. And now, once something is submitted, it will then send this data to Airtable. And then create a condition. So if the second checkbox, which is the account signup, is true, it will invite a user and notify me that someone is interested in the content and is also interested in making an account. If not, it will then just notify me if someone's interested in making content. Now later on, I do want to update this and go ahead and make this to work with MailChimp too. Um, but I have to figure out how to format the API key and I'll do that off video because uh, I'm kind of just digging into this right now. So uh, from there, we'll go ahead and work on or test this out. So in order to test this, we can actually, let's see here. So what I want to do is we will go ahead and Let me see here, apply changes. Okay, I have to republish the site. Perfect. I'm gonna republish the test one here and let's go ahead and do that. <clears throat> Boom, perfect. All right. Now from here, uh, let's go ahead and go back to my flow. You know what, let's go ahead and delete this one just for delete file, okay. <clears throat> then apply changes and apply. So now, I can refresh this page one more time just in case. Now this test is again. Let's do Josiah YouTube. Oops. And then email. Gamma design co and then we'll have this and create a free account. And then we'll do submit. Uh, I need to redesign that, but that's okay for now. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and go back to their table. Boom. And I got my new data in there and it came up under Josiah uh, YouTube. Cool. Uh, now the only other thing, awesome. Everything came in. So I checked my emails and I got the emails that um, I was supposed to get. And yeah, so that is a quick overview of the uh, Webflow logic and you can see you can do a lot with this actually working with HTTP requests and, and working with other applications So you just have to understand their API and, and how they work, but Hopefully you enjoyed or maybe you're getting excited for this Coming and you can see maybe some things you might be able to take off of, of other tools and maybe not have to pay for more I don't know. Maybe this is more a paid feature. I'm not sure but yeah, no, I'm excited for this. I have a couple of things I'm going to be using this for. Obviously, this is one of them, just taking you through a live example of how I'm going to kind of set this up. And there's more work I'll, I'll do to it, but um, this is just a simple setup for now to get some stuff going. Anyways, guys, thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this. If you have any other questions or maybe things you'd like to see with Logic, just comment down below. Let me know. Maybe I can get some ideas with little test projects going to kind of show that, show some more content, and have fun designing. So see you on the next one, guys. Also... Uh, I, I'm in sort of a, a temporary setup now. I got sort of the light behind me, another one over here. Um, I'm either going to be here or at home, but this is going to be like very temporary, I think. Um, so sorry for all the moving around, but um, enjoy the video.